Hi everyone, welcome to Java Island. So in this tutorial, I'll try to explain what an IDE is, JVM, JDK, GRE, data types and variables. This video is for beginners. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. So let's get started. An IDE is an interface for software development that combines all the tools, features into a single application. Features like text editor, debugger, repository management, syntax highlighting, code completion, and unit testing. This all features makes your software development so easy. So why IDE? Do we need an IDE to develop software? We don't need an IDE to develop software. We can configure all tools we need manually, but this can be time consuming. JVM is an engine that provides runtime environment to drive the Java application. So JVM is platform dependent and it provides core Java functions like memory management, garbage collection, security. And we call it virtual because it doesn't physically exist. Java Runtime Environment or JRE. Runtime Environment is a software that runs other software. So it contains the Java class libraries, Java class loader, and the JVM. Class loader loads classes and connects them with the class libraries. JDK allows developers to create Java program that can be executed and run by JVM and JRE. So in this tutorial, I'll try to list three IDEs, but there are a lot of IDEs for Java. So the first one is IntelliJ. And the second one is Eclipse. The third is Nebint. So throughout the course, I will use IntelliJ as my IDE. Variables. Variables are places or containers in memory to store data, information, or value. To declare, the type is listed first, followed by its name. So int is the type, type integer, imp id is the name, and semicolon. So here, we're creating a space in memory called imp id that can store only value of integer. So assigning value or to variable, imp id equals sign 1001. Here we're saying we're putting the 1001 into imp id in a memory space. Int imp id semicolon, then when we do when we assign the value, we're putting the value in memory. The name that we choose for variables is called an identifier. Identifier naming convention. Letters A to Z, lowercase, letters A to Z, uppercase, dollar sign, underscore, number 0 to 9. Do not start with numbers. Do not use any other symbol other than dollar sign or underscore. Do not use reserve keywords in Java. Let's see example. So int 123 id. This is invalid because we cannot start with numbers. This is invalid because apostrophe is not valid symbol. This is valid. This is valid because dollar signs are allowed. Dollar signs are allowed. Underscore are allowed. And this is valid. This is invalid because there is a space between the words. No space allowed between words. Because this is invalid because reserve keyword in java but it's not used it's unused reserve keyword in java short for this is invalid because for is reserve keyword in java int is reserve keyword in java this is invalid because hyphen is not allowed symbol this is invalid because plus sign is not allowed symbol the first letter of variable should be lowercase each successive words begin with uppercase. For example, student, name. Student start with S, lowercase, and N, uppercase. So, variable account balance. Variable V starts with lowercase, A and B are uppercases. This is called camel case. The other case is Pascal case. Combines words by capitalizing all the words, even the first word. So, the first, let's see example, student, name. S is uppercase, N is uppercase. This is used to uh, declare functions, classes, and other objects. Data types can be classified into two, the primitive and non-primitive. We have eight primitive data types, bytes, short, int, long, float, double, boolean, car, and they're used to store data. Non-primitive, string, arrays, classes, interfaces, they do not store value. They store reference to the value. That's why we call them reference variables 
So variables can be signed or unsigned. So when you say unsigned in programming indicates a variable that can hold only positive number. When we say signed in programming indicates the variable can hold negative and positive values. This can be applied to int, car, short, and long. Let's see example. So let's let's try to convert eight in decimal to binary. Eight divided by two equals four. Four times two equals eight. Eight minus eight is zero. Um, four divided by two is two. Two times two is four. Four minus four is zero. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. So we write from left to right, so 1, 0, 0, 0 in binary equals to 8 in decimal. So 8 in decimal equals 1, 0, 0, 0 in binary. Okay, so we got the binary number, so let's change this to 1's complement. To change to 1's complement, we change 1 to 0 and zeros to 1. 0 becomes 1. 0 becomes 1. 0 becomes 1. And 1 becomes 0. So this is the 1's complement value. 1's complement of number 8 is 0, 1, 1, 1. If we want to get the 2's complement, we add 1 to 1's complement. So let's add plus 1. 1 plus 1 is 0 carry over 1, 1 plus 1 is 0, carry over 1, 1 plus 1 is 0, carry over 1, 1 plus 0 is 1. So this is the two's complement. So we have the two's complement value 1, 0, 0, 0, and the first bit is called sign bit. If it's positive, it's 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. And if it's negative, then it's 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Primitive data types. So starting from byte all the way to double, they're called primitive number types. So the, the first four, they store whole number negative or positive. That means they're signed, signed variables. Choosing one of this depends on the numeric value you want to use and the memory usage. For example, if I use byte, it has less range and less memory space so to save memory it's better to use byte than short as long as it can hold the value float and doubles their floating types represent the number with a fractional part so using those depends on the numeric value you want to store and if you want to save memory you can use you can go for float boolean is a data type that can take true or false value and usually they can we can use them for conditional testing the car data type is used to store single character non primitive data type we have string arrays classes interfaces and we'll see them in a coming video so don't worry about those primitive data types they are predefined in java size depends on the type they store data the non primitive reference data type they are programmer defined all have the same value they store reference to the value 